are pro-lifers just pro-birth? That's the question we're going to ask ourselves today. Hey, I'm Kristen Hawkins. Welcome to another episode of Explicitly Pro-Life. All right, everyone, you hear the Twitter comments and the remarks, snap remarks from your pro-choice friends all the time about how pro-lifers just don't care about women after a baby is born, that we're just pro-birthers, um, that we really don't care about women. We are just pro-fetus, um, which is crazy because half of all fetuses are women. Um, but we hear this and this is something that we need to address as pro-lifers because, you know, that old adage of people don't care how much you know until you, they know how much you care. I think that's very true. And in fact, in some of the research that Students for Life, I've been mentioning this kind of secret research Students for Life has been doing on mushy middle millennial women and how they view abortion. What we've also been asking them is how they view the pro-life movement. And I will tell you, um, I haven't seen the final results of the one, the phase one of the study that we're doing. Um, but I will tell you that it's pretty shocking, uh, what women think. Um, we had one, we had this one exercise where women had to be puppets and they had to pick out a puppet that articulated the pro-life view and a puppet that articulated the pro-choice view. And two women I watched, this is how it was basic, how they basically named their puppets. One was the God puppet, who was anti-abortion, and one was the heart puppet, who was pro-choice. What a sad statement. What a sad reflection of what some, how some women view pro-lifers, that they know what's right. They know it's moral. So another person called this puppet the facts puppet, the anti-abortion, the facts puppet. And then the heart puppet was the pro-choice puppet. What a sad statement, right? So we have to do a better job articulating who we are as a pro-life movement and what we're really about. Um, now, I'm not advocating that we change our mission statements uh, as pro-life organizations and take on 20 different issues because as we know, that never works. Um, but we have this whole niche of the pro-life movement, this whole service niche, supportive services, at Students Life, it's one of our five pillars, supportive services, that's dedicated to helping her during the pregnancy and then after. So today I want to talk about what I know is being done right now on college campuses to support pregnant and parenting students. Um, because I see it, you know, I... I have an incredible advantage that I can see what's being done. In fact, I just had a meeting at the Department of Education a few weeks ago with the Deputy Secretary of the Department of Education about what we're doing at Students for Life on our primary campus program and about the challenges we're seeing on college campuses, challenges that we shouldn't be seeing but are there and that somebody has to speak up for these pregnant and parenting women. Um, and, and, and the sad fact is that what we do with our pregnant on campus program, students for life should be very unifying. It should be both pro-life and pro-choice because of the pro-choice movement's really about choice is about choosing life. Uh, when a mother wants to choose life, they should be about helping her make those choices and feel supported in her choice. Um, but that's not what the pro-choice movement's about. They're always about one thing and one thing only, and that's access to abortion. Um, and we've proven that time and time again with our Students for Life, you know, pregnant on campus events on college campuses, where we'll even invite the Women's Health Center or the pro-choice or the feminist group to the round table with us and guess who doesn't show up. Um, but we did actually just have one recent success on a college campus with the, the radical feminist uh, women's uh, center. So there is one at one. All right. So it's Students for Life's Pregnant on Campus program. How do we help? How do we help champion student parents and help them? Well, let me give you some ideas. Um, scholarships. So we actually have a lot of students for life groups who spend a lot of time and effort raising money, volunteering to work at school athletic events, raising money from supporters in the community to fund scholarships for pregnant and parenting students on their campus. Schools like St. Louis University, 
Texas A&M both have really large uh, scholarships that they've endowed for pregnant parenting students. I remember the first semester that SLU, St. Louis University, had their pregnant parenting scholarship set up. The advisor told me that he had a woman reach out saying she didn't choose her abortion uh, because she had heard about the scholarship fund. What really struck me about that was the fact that in reality, the scholarship wasn't that much money. I think it was the first year it was like $500 that was going to a pre- this pregnant, well, this parenting student. That's going to buy you diapers for a couple of months, formula for maybe two months, not a lot. But it wasn't the money. At the end of the day, it really wasn't the money. It was the fact that she had heard and seen on her campus that she would be supported and that she would be loved. That's all it took to save the life of her child. So scholarships, I highly encourage you, like if you're on a college campus and you're in a student's life group or you're on a local right to life committee and you want to get active in the community, set up a scholarship for pregnant and parenting students to be able to apply. $500 will cover their books, cover some, like I said, cover some diapers, cover some formula, but they'll do something greater. It'll show her that you love her, that there's someone on campus who supports her. It will leave that sign of hope for her that just maybe, just maybe choosing life is a, vi- is a viable option for her. Other things that Students for Life and pro-life groups have done on college campus beyond scholarships um, is changing campus policies. So for example, allowing students to live in the dorms while they're pregnant. We just had a huge victory at Liberty University, one of the largest Christian universities in the country, this school year. Liberty University, quite honest with you, was one of the reasons we launched Pregnant on Campus because our Students for Life group goes every Saturday to pray in front of the Roanoke Planned Parenthood, which is about an hour away from campus. They found that women were wearing Liberty University sweatshirts going to the abortion facility on Saturday mornings. Yet everyone knows Liberty is this great Christian pro-life school. And the question was, what the hell is happening here? What we found was women were afraid. They didn't want to go in front of the disciplinary committee because, you know, if you have a school as a code of conduct and you're found to be pregnant, that means you commit a sin because you had sex. <clears throat> the men, you know, the men don't have any visible proof for the pregnancy. Uh, so it's a little different for them. So don't get me started on those things. But what was happening was she was being told she couldn't live in the dorms anymore. When we look at the reasons why college women have abortions, it's housing, it's daycare, it's questions of finances, right? Like, how am I going to logistically do this? How am I going to pay for this? Um, So just this year, this was a two-year process, the Students for Life group there at Liberty worked with the Student Government Association, uh, who then worked with the, the campus administration to amend their policies. Now pregnant women can live in the dorms at Liberty University until they give birth, and then after they can move into married student housing with their child. This is huge. This is a huge victory for the pro-life movement, huge victory for liberty, and quite frankly, it's a huge victory for Christian colleges across the country who I hope will follow in liberty stead. We've been promoting it over and over again, hoping Christian schools get the damn picture here. Other things that students for life groups do on campuses, uh, get lactation rooms, get lactation rooms set up, get diaper changing stations in the male and the female bathrooms. Leave those signs of hope on that campus, right? So when she's walking by and she sees a diaper changing station or she sees a sign for the lactation room, she knows that she doesn't have to choose abortion, that there might be another way for her to get this done. Other things that we find that our Students for Life groups uh, are helpful in on college campuses that are needed to do sadly is Make sure students actually understand, students and staff sometimes understand Title IX rights. So Title IX protects female students. It protects pregnant and parenting students. It says that students should be allowed to take time off for medical reasons, uh, you know, to have doctor's appointments or to give birth, you know, that they can't be discriminated against because they couldn't be at class because they just had a C-section or because they had an OB appointment. 
Um, <clears throat> this means that students, you, the school has to be accommodating to students. So allowing them to reschedule exams or schedule exams at a different time or Skype in for a class to find a way to ensure that a parent uh, can also be a student. Um, and so this is, this is really important. We've actually had a few cases at Students for Life recently, and this is why we were meeting with the Department of Education to tell them about this, where it was the pro-life student group. Once they met a pregnant woman, who were the ones actually going to the school and saying, hey, you know, your policies are vi violating Title IX. In one case, Students of America actually had to send a letter to the school reminding school what their duties are and how their policies can't can't violate Title IX. Uh, Mindy was a recent student, our, one of our students' life groups worked with. Um, we had to help her navigate Title IX. So she knew she could take six weeks off for her C-section. Uh, and to make sure her the university uh, kept her financial scholarship. Leeton, a marketing major, uh, is also another st another student that our Students for Life groups worked with, helped her navigate her Title IX rights, helped her find pregnancy resource and support on in her community. So there's a lot a Students for Life group can do on campus beyond. You know, I always say like your goal as a students for life or students for life or on campus as a pro-life activist on campus is twofold, right? You want to educate your peers about abortion because the abortion industry is directly targeting you for abortion. This is where culture is being formed, minds are being made up. But you also want to, the second part is you want to be there for her. You want to transform your campuses to places of hope and healing and love. Uh, and that's what a students for life or pregnant on campus program does. Students for Life is even engaged right now in research projects, trying to rank different college campuses and what they and how they support and help pregnant and parenting students. So in Chicago is actually our first test phase. We just finished phase one. I can't announce the results yet, um, but we actually studied 20, 20 universities and scored them on five areas, including Title IX information, housing policies, healthcare on campus. And so we've scored them. And so the next step is going to be meeting with the schools, letting them know where their ranking is and giving them suggestions for how to improve their ranking, like adding parking for pregnant students, adding lactation rooms, um, creating marketing partnerships with local pregnancy resource centers, um, uh, raising money to, you know, do the scholarships for pregnant and parenting students. Um, so we're, I'm really excited for the Chicago, uh, pregnant on campus test, uh, and this research study to come out. I think it's going to be transformative for the pro-life movement to be able to say, look, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We've ranked 20 schools. This is where they stand. Uh, we want them to rank higher and we've given them suggestions for doing that because who wouldn't do that? Even if you're a pro-choice administration, which in Chicago, even the Catholic schools are pro-choice. So all the administrations are going to say that they're pro-choice. They're going to be against us when it comes to abortion, but they should be with us when it comes to this issue. They should be with us when it comes to this issue. And if they're not, if they refuse to act, they're going to be showing their bias that they're truly, truly pro-abortion. You know, I was at Boston College uh, a couple months ago for my Lies from his Tell speaking tour. And, you know, I, I talked about this previously. There was a bunch of protesters and op-eds against me in the newspaper and police officers. And um, was interesting during my presentation, at one point I started talking about Maddie Runkles. And if you all might remember Maddie Runkles, she was the high school, um, you know, Val Victorian. She was ahead of the class. She was a student body president who got pregnant at Christian High School in Hagerstown, Maryland, uh, was told because she was pregnant, she was going to be expelled from school because she violated the honor code, the moral code, which was unfair because other students had violated the code drinking and getting arrested, but they had never been expelled. Her parents fought it. Uh, the school said, fine, you can remain in school, but you have to go in front of the entire school uh, and admit your sin. She did do that. Unbelievably, she did do it. Uh, she accepted her two day suspension, which was similar, um, punishment that other students have received for other things, other, you know, 
crimes that violated the moral code. But then the school added on something else. They ended up coming back and said, well, we realize you've done all these things, but now you can't walk on, pre- on can't, uh, you can't walk on graduation because you're going to be seven months pregnant. And actually the principal stupidly actually said this in a media interview. Well, she's going to be seven months pregnant walking, walking across the stage. Maddie contacted us at Students for Life and she told us her story and she wasn't really asking for help. She just said, hey, if you know of another student going through this, let me know. I'd like to help them because, you know, I know I was going to choose life, but I know a lot of other students wouldn't be this lucky. Many of them would probably think of choosing abortion. And so I, you know, instantly we were like, we have to help her. I called the school. I did the whole Christian thing where I went to the school privately, asked them to amend their policies. I, you know, I wrote a letter to their board. Uh, they refused to change. I told them what would happen if they didn't change their policies, which was, I was going to go to the press of story. Of course, I went to the, you know, the most Christian loving newspaper in America, the New York times. And of course they took the story because it's, a, you know, a story of hypocrisy at the very worst. Um, and we made the the school's life, you know, kind of miserable, the school administrator's life kind of miserable for a couple weeks because all of the national media uh, was paying attention to what was happening. <clears throat> and I remember at Students for Life, I had some supporters who actually stopped supporting us because we called out a Christian school. But I felt like it was the right thing to do. And through the process, we set all the Christian high schools in America on notice that if you have discriminatory practices against pregnant students, because pregnancy is not a sin, uh, we're going to come after you and we're not going to let this stand. The pro-life generation is not going to tolerate this behavior. I told this story at Boston College and, and previously before I started telling the story, the students were against me. They were 100% against me. People's arms were folded. They were looking away. I started telling Maddie's story. There wasn't one student. There wasn't one student who was angry, who looked like they were, and I'm pretty good at reading the audience. I can pretty much tell who agrees with me, disagrees with me at this point. There wasn't one student who disagreed with me. Every student at that point knew that something wrong was going on, that, you know, that her school, her Christian school should have been, should have been acting in a Christ-like manner. And it was interesting because after uh, I spoke at BC and the Q&A, it was pretty content, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of drama during the Q&A, obviously, but I had several students email me later saying, you know, I still disagree with you about abortion, but I've been researching our school's policies for pregnant and parenting women all day. And I think you're right. We aren't supporting pregnant and parenting women. What do we do? My response was great. Thank you for being open to this. Go, go hang out with the students for life group. They're the ones on campus bringing the resources and support. Maybe your feminist slash pro abortion group uh, can do the same thing because honestly, that's what we need. You know, our goal in the pro-life movement isn't just to make abortion illegal. It's also to make it unthinkable. Making abortion unthinkable means transforming our campuses, means transforming our schools into places where no woman feels like this is her only option. Like she has to choose between her life and her child's life, her life and her education. I've said this over and over again. I'm going to continue to say it because that is exactly what we're called to do as pro-lifers, as Christians, as decent human beings. Because pregnancy is not a sin. The act of engaging in premarital sex may be a sin, depending on your faith, depending on your religion, but pregnancy is never a sin. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I have met former Christians, former Christians on college campuses, and when I start asking them why they're angry at our pro-life display, why they're there, it's because they were taken to an abortion facility by their parents, someone they trusted who was high in the church. That's it. I just saw a study today citing how the abortion rate for Catholic women is the same as a, as the rate for all American women. There was a care net study that came out not too long ago. I think it was four in 10 women who have an abortion say that they've been to church in the past month. Guttmacher has come out saying that, you know, the majority of abortions are committed on self-described Christians. (coughs) 
why are these women, you know, choosing abortion? Even if they know it's wrong, one's because they don't feel like they have resources. They don't have the support and they feel like they're going to be judged. They feel like their sin is going to be recognized by everyone. Everyone's going to talk about their sin. We have to be called, we have to be called to do more as the pro-life movement to create these resources on college campuses to transform our workplaces you know at students life we've been talking about paid family leave and how do we do that and and we have you know our own kind of funky policies at students life about how we can help support pregnant and parenting workers right accommodate them of I allow student, not students, I allow employees, like up until about six months, we say, go ahead, bring your baby to work until they get crawly and want to touch stuff. It's very, very easy uh, to bring your child into work. Um, we've had regional coordinators who've traveled with their toddler kids, not something I'd recommend. It's not a fun thing, but we've had supporters who step up and become the de facto babysitters every time they're in certain cities. We've made it work and we're a staff of majority women. Um, and But we're called as pro-lifers to transform our workplaces, to transform our campuses. Because guess what, folks? The day is coming. Roe versus Wade is finished. It's going to be overturned in our lifetime. Several states are going to make abortion illegal. Several states are going to make abortion legal. We're going to be fighting all of these battles to make abortion legal in every state capital to get us to the point where that majority where we can get to passing a human life amendment. You know, that's our ultimate goal there. But in that process, we're going to have to be providing the resources and support because we're going to be creating abortion deserts, whole regions of our country where you won't be able to obtain a legal abortion. And we're the ones who are going to have to prepare for this day because it's not Planned Parenthood preparing for this day. They, they do not give a shit about pregnant women. Once you become pregnant, they don't care. You can, if you come back for them for birth control, great. STD tests, great. Maybe some STD treatment. Their, their STD treatments are actually going down. I think they only treated a fourth of all STDs that they identified in their clinics last year. They only want your money. So when you're pregnant and you choose life, you're actually taking money out of their pocket. So they're not going to be the ones providing the support for pregnant and pregnant women. It's going to be us, the pro-life movement. And that's what we're doing on college campuses with Students' Wives Pray on Campus program is transforming the campuses to prepare for post war America. That's why we're advocating for paid family because we want to transform the workplaces now. Um, but there's more we can do. And guess what? We're going to disagree sometimes, guys. We're going to disagree about the best way to support pregnant and parenting women. Especially if you're politically left or versus you're politically right. Uh, those of our team members and my friends who are politically left are going to advocate for more unfunded, you know, unfunded government mandates, more taxes. Uh, conservatives are going to advocate for, you know, private businesses to step up and do the right thing. Individuals, local charities to do the right thing. Um, they're going to advocate for personal responsibility. But guess what? That's okay. We can disagree about the best policy, the best way to help pregnant parenting women. That doesn't mean one person's more pro-life than the other just because we might disagree. You might want universal pre-K funded, and I think that's horrific because I don't want the government teaching my children anything ever. Um, but that's okay because we're starting at the same point. And th that point is we want to be there for her. We want to create so many resources for her. We want to market so many resources, resources for her. She never feels like a, like that Planned Parenthood down the clinic is her savior. That she knows there's something else better, healthy, safer for her. But guess what? She doesn't know it. We did a poll just, um, gosh, it was probably eight, six, six years ago at Students for Life. And we asked millennials, do you know, do you know where you could send a friend who is pregnant but doesn't want to have abortion who needs help? Vast majority, even the pro-life, self-identified pro-life millennials who responded, didn't know. Had no idea. So we have a problem. We have to market ourselves better, market our resources better, get the word out there, who we are, what we're about. That's why I love our Pregnant on Campus program at Students for Life, because pro-life students across the country are showing the nation 
what we're really about. That we're about truth and we're about love. And that we can do it both. We don't have to choose either or. So today I just want to encourage you. Think about what are you doing? What are you doing to support pregnant parenting students in your community and your local campuses like the high school or college campus? What are you doing to support pregnant parenting students, pregnant parenting women and professionals in your church? What's your church response? What's your pastor's response? What more can you do? I'd love to help you come up with ideas. I love to brainstorm ideas. I love to act as the consultant and just tell people what else to do. Because I mean, I don't have to do it. You do it. That's like my favorite thing to do in the whole world. Come up with some ideas. Start going, start by going to our website, pregnantoncampus.org. We have a pregnant parenting resource guide, which is kind of like a scavenger hunt that we encourage all of our students for life groups to go and fill out where all the campus and community resources are. Download that guide and do it for your community. Have it handy at your local pregnancy resource center. Make sure they have a copy of it. Do it for the local school near you and deliver it to the campus health center and see if they'll start actually giving it out to pregnant and parenting women they meet or they come across in their campus health center. Get involved. You can always email me or Facebook message me your ideas. I can give you my email address. Hell, if you get our emails, you know my email address. It's just Kristen, K-R-I-S-T-A-N, at studentsforlife.org. Get active. Do something this week. Do something this month to make abortion unthinkable in our nation. Get active on your campus and your community. Thanks, guys, for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to my podcast on iTunes or YouTube and spread the word. Let's get more people, let's get more people joining us in this pro-life generation, in this post-road generation. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.